Welcome home. This is the Residency Podcast. I am Jeff Tomasic with Drew Belcher and Low Raven. Hello. We are here in Las Vegas to bring you our takes on the biggest stories in business, entertainment, hospitality, and pop culture. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Give us five stars. Write a review on Apple. Follow on Spotify. Full video on YouTube. Episode 50. This is so big. This is so big. Fireworks. Just like your ages, like the ages between like the five year gaps, like don't mean shit besides 21. It's crazy. Yeah. But those five year ones just feel like such big, monumental, like 20, 30. Well, I don't know anything past that, too, but they just feel <laughs> yeah. so big. Yeah. 40. And, 50th episode, man. That's huge. Did you guys think we would get here? Truthfully. No, no chance. I mean, yeah, I, I think what we started on where we're like why we did it all together was that we were determined to actually go and do it because, like we talked about a million times over, most of the time people don't get here. And so if you don't start with people who actually have that mentality, then you won't. The average podcast, speaking from not someone who's an internet celebrity or famous YouTuber or TikToker that just starts a podcast that's immediately successful, the average podcast doesn't make it to 10 episodes. That's so crazy to yeah. think about. 10. And none of us are crazy YouTube famous. Not at, not all. at all. And not to I mean, mention, I'm pretty fucking cool, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, we're fucking yeah. rad. Cool enough that you think you deserve a microphone in front of your I'm face. not David yeah. Dobrik, <laughs> you know what I mean? Know? Plus, not to mention 50 episodes, usually they, sometimes they'll like do a couple, take a little break, try to get back on it, yeah. you know, like get re-motivated again, you know, January 1st, say, but you know what, I gotta start my podcast back again too. We did 50, pretty much in 50 weeks, we missed like five, four weeks because yep. of the pandemic. pandemic. Yeah, so I knew we would get to 50, I just didn't know how consistent we would be, Smashed and we've it. done one every fucking week for almost the past year. I'm not gonna it's lie, crazy. i gotten to a point now, like <laughs> speaking of routine, oh bless that, you love. yeah, bless you love, Thank you, man. was that... Because we delayed this because I had to have a kid. A f- just a few yes. days. We're just recording like three days later than we normally do. It already felt like we haven't recorded in like three weeks. I yet. know. I was like, man, we like- have so much shit to talk about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it felt so it's felt so long already. So it's now like innately in our routine too, or even if like a couple days pass, I'm like, yo, this is Dude, and it like fucks super with me. weird. It fucks with me if we don't like record because then I get like anxiety like, oh my God, we have to record something. Yeah, we, we have to, to record I know, we're going to have way like too many topics, the way too many heaters. Yeah. Whoa, is that how we're really going to lean in and all the hype we're going to give that Jeff just had a fucking baby? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Papa Jeff you in the house. You just kind of threw it in there. Oh, I had a baby? No, hey, Jeff it. had a fucking baby, we dude. We did it. We were supposed to record and like six in the morning. Or like, was it, the yeah, no. So we were going to record on this past Friday on Thursday night. My wife's Melissa's water broke, and it was chaos ensued. Yeah. yeah chaos was- ensued. She looked at me. We were watching TV. We were just relaxing with the dogs, and she was like, uh, what? She was like, I think my water broke. And I was like, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. Because <laughs> we were like a week and a half, but we knew we were going to be a little early, like a week and a half before our due date. She looked at me, and she's like, I think my water broke. And then it was just like, oh, my God. And she was in a little bit denial for her. She's like, oh, no, nah, maybe it's not. I'm like, pretty, pretty sure. <laughs> pretty fucking <laughs> yeah, sure the well. baby's coming. Pretty sure. And then it was like, holy shit, we got to do it. But luckily, we were like. Super prepared. We had packed our bags early. We had gotten Ooh. everything ready too. Like we were overly ready for the moment, so it wasn't like the chaos in the movie oh. where like people are freaking out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Nothing like that. Can, you, I can only imagine Jeff like, all right, it's time. Here we go. All right, back. Boom, 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 boom. I was right. on it, dude. On How was that it. drive over? Like, oh my god, here we go, here we go, here we go. It was just like it was more like you. It's such future tense. Like, yeah, yeah. Melissa and I had, I mean, we're like older, I guess you could say, for people who are having kids, right? Like in our 30s. So it was like, oh, eventually we're going to have kids. And then it was like, eventually we'll get pregnant. Eventually we'll get pregnant. And then we got pregnant. And then it was like, okay, that like nine, 10 months really seems so long. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, we'll have a baby. We're going to have a baby. We're going to have a baby. You, It's just all this future tense. And then all of a sudden it's f- now. It's happening. <laughs> yeah. It's happening. It's so we're driving down. to the hospital. We're like, oh my God. So we're going to we're going to do this, right? You know, like this is actually having no turning back now. It's weird. It's a weird feeling. Definitely. It's like, what? look at each other. You, you got me? I got you. You yeah, got me? All right, like, I got you. It's Because we're having a fucking human, dude. It's so we're having a human. I still don't understand the science of it. It's still nothing makes sense. I it's don't crazy. the science of it. It's, it's literally just, crazy. Afterwards, once London was born and we were sitting there and because she was like a week and a half early, like 10 days early, yeah. just knowing like, hey, we looked at London, looked back at each other and like, you know, if you were still like water hadn't broke, that would still just be inside you. Like, inside. Yeah, that makes sense. Inside. She's breathing. She's laying there. She's sleeping. And I'm like, this, this is, none of this actual, is actual reality. But best moment, so cool. We are a dad right. pod now. Dad, dad pod. We had two podcast babies during, not only did we do 50 episodes, go through a pandemic, but we also had two kids. Had fucking kids. Lo has done nothing. nothing. I've done nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we were, we were fucking. Lo's out here just, you know, yeah. doing nothing. Hey, man, pull Lowe's, out game strong. Yeah, <laughs> Lowe's bumbling. Lowe's bumbling. 
Uh, yeah, unbelievable. Honestly, crazy. Obviously, you very well know the dad yeah. life now, too. So it's been a roller coaster a few days. It gets awesome, it gets man. rough, but then it gets better. So roller coaster it's, it's, a few it's days. It's good. I'm excited to watch the transition with you guys. Going home was great. Settling at home was awesome. That was the best moment, coming home, just like feeling normal again, like putting things away, like getting a little bit organized, like trying to like have some semblance of normalcy was nice. But having London like actually at home and like you walk around and you're like, so you kind of feel like you can't do anything else too. We're both just, just, just staring, staring yeah. at the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just staring at the, at the baby. Like the TV's on. We're both just like looking at the child. Like, are you going to do anything? Yo, is she, is she okay? Yeah, is she you, okay? Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. She blinked. She blinked. <laughs> blinked. Yeah. Everything is monumental. Everything yeah. is the, she's the smartest baby in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just want you to know this. Smartest baby in the world. Um, super happy. By the way, shout out to, um, uh, the name reveal that we did. Yeah, Barry's our, Prime, right? To our boys over at Barry's Prime. Thank you for letting us do that. They actually the named scene. they named a dessert after London, and we got to reveal her name. And it's actually on the menu. They gave us a menu and everything. Yeah. The London Rose Cake. So sick. That's, That's fucking rad, dope. Man. So cool. Has like uh it's like London chocolate ganache yeah. and like a chocolate rose on top, obviously. Wow. And then 24 karat rose gold flakes on it. So a lot of London Rose action. Super cool. We did the dinner. It was such a fun YouTube video. We is paired. it good, though? Is it good? It's so bomb. Would you tell us if it sucked? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like... <laughs> well, it's you, all right. You know, if you go, like, like you like most of the time, like, 99% of the time, like, desserts are just awesome because yeah. it's fucking chocolate. Yeah, it's just like, chocolate. Yeah. It's chocolate yeah. and gold. Yeah. Like, you can't... Chocolate, really, butter, yeah. and fucking some sprinkles, exactly. you're good. It's way better than dessert you'd make at home, too, because they put the real shit in there. For too. sure. There's no nutrition facts with it, no. you know? You don't this have is, to worry about this it. This is not Hershey's chocolate syrup and yeah. fucking vanilla ice cream. It's that good shit. So, uh, amazing. Wild few days. So happy 50th episode. Happy first day on the planet, London. Yes, sir. We're excited. Congratulations, Jeff. Congratulations to me. I'm That's right, dude. Dad. We there did it. it. Is, it's man. crazy. Wi- it's wild dad. to say that of all the things that could go wrong, like you just need one thing to go wrong to really throw everything off, which I think was like the biggest thing for us why we were so scared during it. To have everything just go right, like the baby comes out, like 10 toes, 10 fingers, breathing well, hearing yeah, well, man, smelling blessing. well, awesome. eyes, and you're just like, oh my God, it actually all came together. Yeah. Wild. Absolutely wild. By the way, happy birthday to my wife, Melissa. God hey. and damn. It's her birthday, too? It's You've her birthday, too. Weekend, damn, man. bro. What a weekend. What is going on? Melissa officially gave her birthday to her daughter. Yeah. It's over. It hey, that sucks. They're, yeah. they're, damn. they're like three days, uh, four days apart. Yeah. So they're, she, she's never going to have a birthday. Melissa, and, you guys just can do the leftover cake from London and just yeah. light a candle oh, sure. for Melissa. Well, yeah. you know, is this, too? Like, the first few birthdays are just going to be so... They're for the parents. Oh, for the, the parents. First, for the, the parents and the friends. For the parents. So she's just going to worry about London's birthday for the first few years. But by the time the hype of London's birthday dies down, I'll be like, oh yeah, happy happy birthday to you, to you too. Like, right. Hey, happy birthday, babe. <laughs> yeah. Are you good? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's fuck. a cupcake, you know? Fuck. Yeah. yeah. That'll be it. So that's so we have a lot going on right now, too. Luckily. March is gonna hit Jeff's wallet pretty hard. <laughs> hard. Yeah. So would you guys do anything for her birthday? Obviously not. Probably what, some dinner tonight? Melissa's just like totally nesting right now, yeah. too. Yeah. So we're gonna have like order carry out. I think we're gonna get locale because she would like to oh, yeah. food over Perfect. there too. Perfect. Bring it home, just eat with her parents yep. and us, keep it really low key, chill. It's ob- it's London's third day home. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah. this is the chillest birthday we've ever had. I think Melissa like barely even remembered it was a birthday when she woke up. She was just like, okay. Gotta Sweet. feed the baby. Yeah, yeah I gotta do shit. Baby, that's it's it. your birthday, really? Yeah, it's your birthday. It. Yeah. There you go. A lot happening. Also, happy March Madness to everybody. Let's go. Oh, damn, dude, March is crazy. I missed it last year, man. Yeah, yeah, March Madness got ruined last year, too, so that's yeah. big. Vegas isn't gonna be as it normally was for March Madness, but it's coming back. It's, it's kind of interesting. At least the tournaments. Too. Yeah, at least the tournaments in there. A lot less locations. Yep. So we have that. At least everyone gets to watch it. Everyone yep. gets to gamble. These sports betting apps are going to go through the roof. Insane. They missed yeah, it all last year. They just released year. the Michigan numbers through the fucking roof, of yeah. course. And this this week and this month is just going to get astronomical. Insane. But shout out to my alma mater, Oregon State. Notoriously terrible at basketball. Winning the Pac-12. Shout out to the Big West champion UCSB Gauchos. Got I a saw t- that. Got I was trying to flex on Instagram go. story. I was like, get the fuck out of here, What the fuck dude? is a we, gaucho? We, we, a gaucho. We got it's an Argent- t- Argentine cowboy. Yeah, man. We got a ticket to the dance, too. So we're in the we're in the tourney. First time in 10 Vegas. years. Some, I mean, what am I saying? We're the, the Oregon State's the beavers, for God's sake. Too. Yeah. It's like the last animal on the line of mascots. You're like, I guess I'll take the beaver. <laughs> yeah. if, everyone else is, if everyone else is shouting now, shout out to the UNLV running rebels. Are they in the tourney? No, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or Oregon actually does have notoriously like weak ass animals, the ducks and the beavers. Pussies. Like, yeah. All pussies. <laughs> yeah, just super chill ass animals. 
Um, Happy St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's go, Day tomorrow. So tomorrow. many celebrations right now happening. What is so, Saint, What is St. Patrick's Day? So St. Patrick, let's do a little St. Patrick's Day. We've gone over a lot of the holidays in the past. Everyone, think, when I think St. Patty's Day, I immediately just think drinking. Green and 100%. drinking, I getting d- fucked up. Immediately think of drinking, and like, yeah. Shamrocks, yeah. And shamrocks. Like the, oh, I mean, not the shamrocks for the people for the leprechauns, uh, leprechauns, leprechauns, yeah, leprechauns. Yeah, shamrocks. <laughs> shamrocks. Um, Can't call them little people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about to get canceled, bro. Shit, you're about to get leprechauns. Canceled. Leprechauns. So St. Patty's Day stats right now too. So if you guys don't know, 13 million pints of Guinness are served on St. Patty's Day Whoa. in the U.S. A lot. Estimated 6.6 billion dollars is spent on St. Patty's Day celebrations. Yep, that's crazy. No what problem. A, what else do you do I don't, besides drink. I don't. That's what I'm saying. Oh, corned beef. Corn beef. Yeah, yeah. Drink, corn drink and beef. eat. Yeah, corned beef, yeah. lettuce, the whole the whole lettuce nine. Right? Is cabbage. Cabbage, that's bro. Cabbage. Corn, cabbage. Corn beef and lettuce. Oh, oh my god. god. Like corn beef cabbage, salad? dude. What it's are cabbage. You doing? Cabbage. Whatever. <laughs> cabbage lettuce. Same fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> corn beef lettuce wraps. Saint Pat. <laughs> Saint- bomb. That's what Jeff eats for sure. Bomb. Bomb. Saint Patrick's Day is the fourth most popular drinking day in the U.S. What's the first? It's got to be the day before Thanksgiving. It didn't say. Oh yeah, yeah. Probably. Probably that too. I would. Assume probably like New Year's, New Year's Eve, July Fourth, Memorial Day, maybe Ooh, or Super Bowl. Good. Well, they're Ooh, fourth. Okay, okay. Super Bowl, one of those two. So St. Patrick's Day is up there. Complete. It's just a. I feel like St. Patrick's Day. The, the rest are everyone's drinking. Like yeah. casual, more people. St. Patrick's Day feels like the blackout holiday for sure. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's you know? getting fucking. July Fourth, everyone's having a blast. Like drinking. Same same thing. New Year's Eve, everyone's just like just drinking because yeah. it's what you do. Super Bowl, same thing. St. Patrick's just like I'm going. It's that's all you do. Irish car bomb. Irish car bomb. Irish car bomb. And early, like every other day. Soon as you wake up. Yeah. As soon as you wake up. Yeah, this is not go out at night, you have a good little night notice. Yeah. Get up and yeah. fuck up the day. Yeah. yeah. St. Patrick's green, Day. Green fingers from putting green shit in your beer. Everything. All that Ooh. shit. Speaking of that, Chicago dumps 50 pounds yeah. of dye into their river every year. So my question for you guys is, why doesn't Vegas have a cool tra- uh, tradition? O'Shea's does a thing. I mean, I'm I talking mean, like... That's, that's <laughs> whack. No. A monster yeah, tradition on the strip, like too. Like, you know, the Chicago green dye in the river is like absolutely iconic. Vegas guys to have it up, I feel But like, like Chicago, Boston, and New York, these all Irish have communities. huge, huge yeah. Irish communities. Uh, we're a transient city. If we do something cool, then the Irish will come. What do we do for St. Patty's Day? I think Vegas is just so unworried about St. Patrick's Day because we have March Madness. And March Madness for is sure. so important yep. that they just forget about St. Patty's Day a little sure. bit. I mean, like they'll do something small and everyone will have like a green flyer for a night. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean? but, but honestly, like from, a, from an operator, that's the same thing. Yeah, if you're going to be focusing on the next day is actually yeah. March Madness starting, why put all your energy, your money, all your focus into that when you have four days of just n- madness. mayhem? Madness. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, Bellagio Fountain, does it ever turn green? No, they no. should do that. Why no. don't they do that? Yeah. Let's just do that. I mean, that sounds like the, a good... The, the yeah. dye, it... What is it? Not evaporates. Dissolves. <laughs> it dissolves. Evaporates. Evaporates. Yeah, yeah. The condensation comes up in the river and it rains and it's green. No. We now have a green sky. Yeah, it dissolves yeah. in like what? I think yeah. a day or two? I mean, I'm sure. They should do enough. it. Yeah. They should do it. Blow up fucking yeah. the Bellagio fountain. Bellagio, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Do that. Hey, Luxor, shout out to you. I assume those gr- lights better be green. It, they they, they have to watch. be. They, they better be green. Be. It'll be blue. They better be green. <laughs> yeah. Or pink. Yeah, blue or pink. From fucking reveal still. Still on the cycle. I think Bellagio... That has to be the, the number one. Bellagio has to be green. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I can't remember a time where it's ever been green before. It will never. Well, it yeah, hasn't. Like, never. It hasn't. It, it seems pretty obvious, guys. Yeah. Come mm-hmm. on, just some dye. Make it happen. There you go. What I don't like is when people say St. Patty's Day with T's, it's Paddy's Day with two D's. I didn't know that. I just found out maybe a couple years ago. Did you guys know that? Uh, I've seen it, but didn't so know people that say like it's St. Patrick's, but when they uh, you know they shorten it and abbreviate it, it's it's St. Patty's Day, not St. Patty's. It's vi- that sounds very Irish. Wow. Of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Patty. It's Are you Patty. Irish? No. You look Irish. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. No, no. I you th- look I, Irish. I think you I'm look mo- like you're taking, like, yeah. you, like you, if I just was looking at you as I'm watching you say this, I was like, man, he's offended because he's, he's fucking obviously offended. Irish. Yeah. No. <laughs> he was getting defensive yeah, for a second. Like, I'm off. more Finnish than anything. Finnish mm. from okay. Finland. All right, there you go. Has any, have anybody done like the 28 and me? No, I'm 20, 20, 20, 23 and me. 28? 23? Well, I know. We're always off today. We're so off. many people are like, oh, I don't want them having my info. It's like, guys, look, we walk around with fucking iPhones yeah, iPhones in our hands at all times. They, they can see and hear whatever you want. They I mean, have your info. They have Who it. Who cares? Take it. Swab yeah. my fucking inside of my cheek and send it away. Sure. Yeah. No don't problem. Care. I might do it. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's all do it. All right. I think it's like a hundred bucks, right? Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, twenty three and me, and see exactly what we we should we should actually though write down what we think we are, <laughs> yeah. and then what it actually is. But first, see, though. people get them, and there's like literally fifteen different things. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, oh, Western European, Native American. I mean, like Irish. May, maybe you do like first, second, third place, like which because they because they, they they do percentages. Yeah. So like, which what do we think are we first, second, third? 
You know what? I bet if I uh, if we do it, I'm. Prefer- what if I'm like one percent African, or like a half percent African? For sure. As I'm looking right now, where it counts, you know what I mean. Where it counts, only where it counts. You are zero percent African. (laughs) You never know. You never know. No, 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 no. no. I'm looking at you right now. I know. (laughs) (laughs) I know. You got to look where it counts. I'm only African. This is a glass table. I know. (laughs) I know. Uh, My first and second would be if I had to actually bet to my Greek and Irish. That's why I'm one, two Greek Irish. There you go. That's what I think that I am. What about you? I'm you're, mostly Filipino, for sure. Most Filipino. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mostly Filipino, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And you think you're mostly Finnish? I think, I, see, I honestly don't know. So I thought I was German for so long, but my last name, Belcher, is actually Belcher, and it's fucking French. Oh, wow. Hot, f- no, not hot. French hot. are the biggest pussies in the world. Ah, French is yeah. great. No. French is great. We, we love taking L's. Yeah. I know. French is great. French. I, feel like, I feel like I made fun of French people I'm forever. I'm not going to lie. Belcher sounds like you're trying to fancy your name, but it shouldn't be a Belcher. It's like Belcher. It's, it's, like, it's like going to Target. 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 I feel like yeah. I need to start correcting you. Oh, Mr. Belcher. It's like, ah, oh, it's it Belcher. 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 You sound like such an asshole. <laughs> Excuse me. Anytime you dress up, you have to be Belcher. <laughs> Belcher. Mostly because your first name isn't fancy enough. No, Drew. The Mr. Fuck? Belcher. Uh, what's your first name? Drew. Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Drew. Andrew? No, yeah. just fucking yes, Drew. Drew. Just Drew. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Bellagio, if you hear this, tomorrow, St. Patty's Day, it's still time. We'll come dump green in with you. We won't even charge you for that idea. Just yeah. take it. Just yeah. go. Just, just do fucking it. take it. Let's get the people happy. You know, you know how many photos people would be taking in front of the Bellagio Fountain? More than they normally are. Tons. Tons. For sure. Tons. Um, all right. T- more about Vegas, too. Bad news, possibly. Uh, by the way, another thing in Vegas, happy 50th episode for Residency Podcast. Yep. Happy 50% to the city of Las Vegas. As of yesterday. As of yesterday. Let's go. So another huge milestone. It seems crazy to say that, but 50% is gigantic from what it was like a few weeks that ago. That means like the C- Cosmo's probably at 95%. Yeah, Cosmo's at <laughs> Yeah, they just opened the buffet. Like, what, how are you going to do that? Like, who, are you still, are you going to serve yourself with the big spoon or is people going to be serving you? Once uh, Texas, probably serving you. Once yeah. Texas put out that tweet, <laughs> everybody was like, fuck it. Uh, all right, but Vegas, so we assumed that we were going to essentially take everything from Oakland, yeah. but it looks like that Oakland is going all in on a new proposed athletic stadium to keep the Major League Baseball franchise in the city. They're pretty sick of losing everything because they lost the Warriors to San Francisco, San Francisco. Yep. which was huge, one town over. Lost the Raiders to us. Lost the Raiders to one us. One town over. Um, full development with Performance Center, brand new stadium, shopping, even affordable housing around all on the Oakland side of the waterfront. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful. Um, that sucks because I feel like the Oakland A's would have been a really easy transition to Las Vegas. Yeah. But they were the huge runner to come Huge to Vegas. runner because Tampa Bay, obviously everyone's talking. Well, the Rays and the A's were by far the last two places when it came to average attendance over the last five years. Yeah. Because they then, suck. Yeah. But then Tampa Bay, they're building, or St. Petersburg, that they're building the new. Um, stadium for the Rays, and now it looks like Oakland is going to get theirs. Does Vegas get an MLB, MLB team still? Yeah. Well, yeah first eventually. off, I don't want the the A's. Why? <laughs> what does it matter? Suck. They're going to be a new I team. Want, I want any team. We're not going to yeah, get an incredible team anyways. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I'd rather have like an expansion team. You think they're going to do an expansion team? Because NBA, they say they might do an expansion team. Uh, no, they're going to have to pull from one of those weaker markets, Yeah, it to makes be sense. I got you. I think so, too. Only because Tampa Bay, they do suck. I mean, they, they won a World Series... Never, right? Tampa Bay. No, they won one. No, they won one. They no, won they won one. one back in yeah, the day, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, but there's just so much better shit to do in Florida than go to a baseball game. Same as San Diego. Yeah. Like the Chargers left, the Padres suck. But there's so much better shit to do on a, a Sunday afternoon than go watch the Chargers lose. Yeah, for sure. I Same think, in Florida. I think like the Padres are really good owed to them, the Chargers leaving and San Diego being a great city to have one s- sports team. Have right? you guys been to you know the, I mean? like, the baseball stadium in San Diego? Yeah, Petco many Park? times. That is my favorite baseball yeah, stadium. It's beautiful. It is yeah, beautiful. It's right Absolutely part of beautiful. Like the yeah. downtown. Right, right downtown. Right, right in Gas Lamp. Yeah. It is beautiful. It is so nice. Um, I don't know who we would take either, you know? Because some of the middle market teams, like that you would think, like like St. Louis, for instance, has the number one average attendance in the country. Like, so some of these middle market teams, you actually do really, really well as far as attendance goes. I don't know, but I think we will get one. Yeah. I think now NBA for sure is going to be first. No question. Well, I think it's just a layup because we already have a WNBA team. And the arena is already the there. Technically, there. they can play at T-Mobile, right? Yeah, I would assume at this point now too. Yeah. There's nowhere else for them to go to. There's no reason to build another arena, especially after what just happened. Yeah, like no one's investing in a whole new arena space outside, especially the sphere is just for concerts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there. So there's not gonna be a sports team in there. Not at all. It's so not. So it's not. It's not built for that, anyways. Yeah. I mean, so do we do like for baseball, like the A's did in Oakland, is have the stadium have baseball and for football. 
at no. Allegiant. No, 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 you no, think no, they build chance. a brand now, new baseball nowadays stadium? Nowadays in modern sports, there's, there, that'll never happen again. They build a brand yeah, new Yeah, they'll build a brand new sure. stadium. There was rumors, I think like last year, that they were gonna, someone was going to buy the Rio, the Rio yeah. and tear blow it, it down, down, and put a baseball stadium there, which would be sick. But, I mean, who knows now, too? I definitely think, though, my vote is NBA is coming first. Yeah, I'll, I want NBA to come first. Yeah. That'd I be so sick. Too. I don't care. I want another pro team. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Bring them all. Bring them all. Bring them all. I want we'll Vegas take it all. All, all of them. Yeah. Facts. Um, all right, so we'll see. But Oakland. You let us know. NBA or MLB? Oakland, I hate to say this, but I'm rooting against you. They knew. They were like, we cannot lose another team to fucking Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. Like, they have to. And Vegas is so much cooler than Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> Way fucking yeah. cooler. I mean, you guys ever been to Oakland? Yeah, of course. You ever been to Oakland? You fly J- only once. Jet Suite lands right in Oakland. Absolutely Oakland. nothing to do in fucking Oakland. I didn't spend yeah, time there. Yeah. I had to like go through there to get to San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah I mean? Oakland, shithole. Yeah. You know what I didn't realize though? Shout out to Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, shout out to Marshawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never E-40. realized San Jose is actually bigger than San Francisco. I never realized. Bro, San Jose is dope. You been to San yeah, Jose? San yeah, of course. Great. San Jose I'm a Niner fan. Yeah. You fly into San Jose? Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my older brother and uh, his wife lived in San Jose forever. They just moved to a little north or northern now, but San Jose, fucking amazing. Awesome. And man. it's 30 minutes from San Francisco. Yeah. You really I never, I never realized it was actually bigger though than San Francisco proper, which was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, huge. Yeah. Um, all right. More of that. Sorry, Oakland. I'm literally rooting against you with every bone in my body. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like that. We got to talk about our boy Elon Musk. Every week he's on the podcast now, too. It seems that Elon just understands when he has a quiet PR week. He just goes, ah, let's just do something. What can we do? Let what can see. we do? Ding. Light bulb. So Tesla decided they had nothing new coming out, no new crazy cars. He didn't, have, he didn't tweet anything incredible. But they just filed with the SEC last week in the most recent filing. Elon Musk and the CFO officially have new titles. <laughs> so Elon is not the CEO of Tesla anymore. Oh, is he He's the not. president? What is he? He is the techno king. Techno king. Techno king. He's the techno king. And the CFO, Zach Kirkhorn, is now the master of coins. I love it. Master that. of coins. That's the coolest shit Bitch. ever. That's the coolest shit ever. I mean, I just feel like that he's a kid. Yeah, big trap in their super smart adult body and is just sick of like how adults run adult life, which I love. And he's like, I don't care. I'm rich. I can do whatever. I want. Why is everyone so goddamn worried about like their LinkedIn profile? Your by the way, Vegas is notorious for bullshit titles. So <laughs> I feel like Vegas should get more creative with their titles now too, because this is Everybody's unbelievable. Everybody's a director of something. something. I don't know. Have you guys been on Clubhouse lately and seen some of those people's bios? Yeah, they're outrageous. They're well, fucking outrageous. Really? Founder, this, that, yada, yeah. yada, yada. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yada, yada, Venture yada. capitalists <laughs> suck my dick. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. It's crazy. It's a lot. And I think you should just be like, hey, man, I'm the master. But, I mean, if you say master of coin of Tesla, it sounds like Oh, yeah. It's, it's so actually sick. no one can say shit. Yeah, yeah. If, you're, if you're just master of coin, period, then it's like, this guy is a fucking crypto loser. Loser. Yeah. If you're like, hey, I'm the master of coin of Tesla, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes what? sense. Super legit. Yeah. This reminds me of like, uh, what was uh, the Facebook movie? Okay. Remember yeah. when he was like, social on, network? He was like, yeah, on social network, he's like, I, I'm CEO, bitch. CEO, uh, bitch. On, on the business card, too. It's just like, <laughs> this is like Elon's version of that. Yeah. It's like, he's For just sure. like, I don't want to be. It's like he's having fun. Yeah. You need to have fun. He can do whatever he fucking wants. But when he's having a slow week, like he just changes CEO. Techno King is ridiculous, though. You, remember, have, do you guys ever see the video of the Techno Viking? Was that of the fucking shredded fucking buff dude with the beard? Look like a Viking. He's called the Techno Viking, just dancing in the streets of Norway like a little <laughs> fucking rave, walking. You are Finnish, yeah, yeah for <laughs> sure. What is Techno Rolling Viking? Up. I'm gonna I'm gonna insert the clip. That's hot. Yeah, with yeah, Elon's face on it right now. <laughs> Spe- yeah. Speaking of that, by the way, Techno, uh, his te- Elon Musk NFT that's coming out too. Oh my the, god, here we go. Has a music. Oh no, it's an NFT of an NFT. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so there's like there's like a music, like a soundtrack in the background. It's moving, and he's putting out that whole. I mean, is like it I said, NFT of an NFT song? Yeah, Elon, man, of course he is. Un- absolutely unbelievable. Um, I like it. Do you think more companies should do ridiculous names? To their I think these companies titles? that have such huge market caps do whatever the fuck have that makes them happy yeah. and have fun. Stop being so serious. That's what it is. You know. Yeah. It's, I I think that whole super serious culture is kind of fading out of the the workforce anyway. Yeah. Like as as we start getting older, we're gonna start controlling these huge companies and everything, and yeah. it's our age demographic, and everyone's just gonna be having fun. Well, you saw that too with like how offices changed too, like you know how like the tech world changed, like Google yeah. and how they changed sure, like sure. what the office dynamics look like. Right. It's turned it's into like, a campus instead of just yeah, being an office no more building, suits every camp. day and a lot more communal spaces and you know all sorts meditation of meditation rooms. Yeah, like all sorts no of no doors on the offices. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we and we work try to do that before. Where they fucked everything up. Oh, we work. Uh, yeah. Great story. But speaking of NFT, this is like the biggest topic. We're at absolute NFT mania. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. 
it's been like two and a half weeks since we did. And since that happened, it has just been an onslaught. Everyone is just, try- it's the biggest cash grab I've ever seen in my life. Anyone that owns any type of content that they actually own the rights to, just putting out NFTs. Flooding, left and right. Left flooding and right. NFTs. The, the crazy part that is interesting to me is people are buying these. Right? Like, it's not like, okay, you can create NFT, you put it out there, whatever, it's this crazy price point. People are going, I'll buy it. For <laughs> like, 1.5 million. What is going on? Like, Blau's recent little drop. 1.5 million was like the winning bid. Like, this did, guy, did these you, guys are just bidding on it. Like, oh, oh, did you hear the story 50, of like StockX? In the very beginning, StockX, the whole premise was that there should be a stock market yeah, yeah. like valuation for shoes. Yeah. yeah. And that's like, and so if there is a market for something, then essentially there can be what this is. But like, if you start betting on, I think it's interesting, right? So like, what about athletes? Like if 10 years ago, you could have been like, oh wow, I want to buy whatever, like invest in LeBron James as a brand, as a company, right? Right now would have been a massive bet, right? Sure, you know, he's sure. a multi-billion dollar corporation at this point, right? So it's like, this kind of makes sense, but I think people are just putting shit out so fast that it's, I don't know if they're going to have value to because it just now, I think it's so easy for the makers to make money that they're not worried about the investors making money, right? So it's like if you're a creator and you just put out X NFT, right? And all of a sudden you made a million dollars. You're like, holy shit. You are shit. stoked. You are immediately hanging up the phone, high-fiving each other and saying, all right, what am I doing for an NFT next week? These dumbasses yeah. fucking paid for it. Let's go. <laughs> I am like, I am painting photos. I'm on just, I'm doing whatever it's I I'm on Microsoft Paint, just doodling and shit. NFT. NFT drop Sell next it. week. NFT Sell drop it. next week. Sell it. Like, it's wild. I don't know. I think that's the only thing that's going to go crazy, but some of the big ones that have happened, obviously, since we talked about it, Blau set an absolute record with his NFT sale. Drake is using NFTs with his new album. He delayed yep. it, so he's going to put NFTs yeah, out didn't with his I call album. it in our group text? Yeah. I was it's joking. So I was joking. Crazy. Man. Steve Aoki just had a huge NFT launch with art and music, made millions of dollars as well. Taco Bell launched an NFT. Gronk is launching an NFT. Yep. Jack Dorsey is selling his first ever tweet on Twitter as an NFT, which is being auctioned for over $2 million, which he's giving to charity. And then the biggest one, that the artist, that artist Beeple. That Beeple. Sold the most expensive NFT ever, obviously by a landslide, on Christie's auction house. It's, that's so fucking crazy. For $69 million. Yeah, it was, it was a, collection it's a collection of different yeah. artworks over every day for a year. Yeah. So it was 365 different cool pieces together, cumulative, and sold for $69 million. Who the fuck is paying for that? It's crazy. And who the fuck thinking it's going to appreciate a value? I think currently, like you just said, it's a it's a cash grab. I think For these sure. artists, these athletes, whoever are just saying, hey, NFT craze, let's put one out, let's sell it, boom, make a couple million and that's it. What do these investors get out of it? So what's crazy? So well, it's just like it's just like art though, right? There's no there's no But it's not just it's, it's not. not just like no, no, art. But like, but it's like, a JPEG. It's, okay. it's all perception right now. But you could say that about shoes, about anything, right? Too is like, I can touch that sh- I can take Yeah. Damn, Lowe's got some fire ass shoes on, by the yeah, way. But like, so, I can take Lowe's shoe right now and hold it. I can smell it. I can lick that soul. This but, NFT, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna finger fuck that USB? I think if you talk to any <laughs> if you talk to anyone who has money ever, and it's really to feel I realize like what they value money to. Like if you see some rich person, you'll see one rich guy dressed like a fucking bum who doesn't value clothes at all. And another rich guy who has like a five thousand dollar suit. You're like, okay, that guy values that way more than this guy. Or it's one guy with a really nice car, and some guy's like, Why the fuck would you waste that money on a Lambo? Right? He's driving a fucking Toyota or whatever, right? Doesn't really care. So I think like the value in general of like someone sees it, and then once rich people value shit at a lot of money, other rich people just want it. Like it But just, no one can see these NFTs. No, the, they have like somebody that they're, they're, they're on now. the blockchains and shit. Like, dude, what? I want to. I need to talk to somebody who's buying this shit. Everybody I've talked to or see or know is selling this shit, right? Everybody sells it. Who the fuck is buying? Well, you can buy these NFTs for like ten bucks. You can buy like well, yeah, little you can weak get, ass like, ones. Like, have you seen the NBA displays NBA though? Shop, yeah. Or, or have you seen the displays like the NBA Top Shop one? No. They're pretty cool. Like they're little stands that that come up and it has it displayed on it, and it's just like rotating that screen and then it has like the launch and your little like tag number and then it like plays a clip and then it just like rotates in and out i mean look i have no idea don't get me wrong though too does everyone do it like who are you betting on because think about this if i like I, my dad sent me a lot of sports cards from when i was growing yeah. up right and there were some players in there that like i could have sworn were going to be like i was obsessed with like for yeah. instance like jerry stackhouse 
Yeah. Jerry Stackhouse at the Matt Boone time too. Incredible. Yeah. Now, Pistons. no value. Yeah. Zero value. His cards are worth... $9. Yeah. No, $9. They're worth like 50 cents. Yeah. yeah. They're worth the card that they're printed on too. Not even the plastic case that's in them. <laughs> but at that time, Jerry Stackhouse would have been great too. So people who are popular now, and now I think popularity comes and goes faster than ever before. So people investing in some of these people... Are, could just be a massive risk. Like, for instance, Alec Monopoly and Ozuna are putting out NFT tomorrow. Yeah. Is that shit going to go up in value? Is that worth $500,000? A million dollars? I, I mean, because the numbers aren't like, they're not going, like we went from like NFTs not existing to millions of dollars. There was no in between. There's yeah. no like, oh my God, I'm spending $10,000 on this. Like, that's incredible. $10,000 for music that I normally would have downloaded for free. And now it's officially mine or a piece of artwork. Like, by the way, if you're buying $10,000 painting, you're rich. Like, if you're buying $10,000, yeah, $15,000, yeah. $20,000 pieces of art, you're rich. We went from zero to a million to two. Like, how yeah. do we go? How, where was the middle ground? There is none. Have, there you is ever, none. have you ever heard of the artist Beeple before this? No. No. I don't think we're in that Go ahead world. and ask me. Go ahead and ask me. What is that? Oh, have you ever heard of Beeple? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> no. The answer is fucking no. And you just sold some fucking shit on a USB drive for $70 million? Yeah. Go it's, fuck yourself. It is unbelievable. Dude, get out of here. It it's, it's really Get out of here. The, the other part, too, is like if you're buying these things, right? Are you looking at this as like an art investment? Are you looking at this because you're going to flip it and try to create more capital or there's a return on that investment? How are you looking at these fucking things? Because it's <laughs> half the shit you can't even tell what it is. I would, I would think, honestly, at this point now, too, I've been listening to a couple things on this, is that some people, as a flip, very dangerous. If you're going to spend that much money on it, you should look at it like a car. Look at it like a depreciating asset that you really, really enjoy. But no, I can drive that exactly. car. But like, yeah. I can get my dick sucked in that car, Jeff. But whatever. If you're rich enough and you're like, I really want that, and, it, and it's five hundred thousand dollars, and I'm rich enough, then fucking buy it. Yeah. But don't don't expect it to be like someone who's going to spend like, hey, I'm going to buy this for five hundred thousand dollars, and I'm going to flip it for a million dollars in yeah. a month. That's fucking d dangerous as shit. Because who knows? You might be like, this is incredible, and everyone else will be like, that sucks. You know. So I have no idea. Some of it seems completely outrageous. But some of, some of it, I'm also thinking that like, wow. This is pretty much anyone can put out an NFT right now. Like you said, anyone with any following that anyone has any love for, this is the time. Like if you're not putting out an NFT right now or at least trying, fuck it. Because by the way, millions is cool. Put one out. If you make a hundred grand for doing nothing, like <laughs> what's your overhead on that? A fucking video camera? I don't like, fucking know. If man. you have anyone right now who's paying for your OnlyFans or paying for your Patreon and, and you're making like a monthly stipend, you should put out an NFT right now. If someone's already paying for what you put out, not like I'm getting paid you know from ads from YouTube or anything like that too, but if, you, if someone's purchasing anything that you're doing on a consistent level and you're making real money, put out, call someone to make an NFT tomorrow. Like, why not? I mean, so, like, why doesn't LeBron or any of these NBA guys doing this? That was, like, why doesn't LeBron have his own videographer at his games filming dope, dope content from him? Because it's all owned by the NBA. That's not owned by LeBron James. Yeah, it's owned by the NBA. What it's is? owned by the NBA. If LeBron has his homie with a video camera? No, they can't do you that. Can't. Why the fuck can't they? Because the NBA owns the game. They don't, it's not an official LeBron James fucking game. That's an NBA, of course. So now what if, could LeBron do it at his now, house? Now, hold on. Do if I he was doing like a dunk highlight court? reel, yeah. If he was doing like a dunk highlight reel, he I'm could do sure that. if LeBron did a custom one of one fucking like you know these, got, these, taco. At, these athletes got to be getting pissed though. I was just about to ask that. That was my next question. Like, <laughs> like could you? I'm not not just NFTs, but sports cards too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if I'm looking and I'm LeBron James and I'm like or Tom Brady because Tom Brady tweet uh, I put on his Instagram story the other day because his cards over a million dollars or a million and change. Yeah. He was like, wow, you know, I should get into sports card stuff too. Could you imagine like if a picture of you? <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard for us to imagine because it's ridiculous. No, it's but, not. No, it's but not. a picture We're of really you, good looking. A picture of you, the finish, a finish, <laughs> Olympic finish card of you. Yeah, sold Sick. for a million dollars, <laughs> and you got nothing of it. Like you'd be like, wait, what the That's fuck? That's gotta hurt. That's gotta hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Or if LeBron is looking and someone's paying two hundred thousand dollars for like his digital dunk. And he's like, yo, what, yo, am I? Yo, he calls business manager. Hey, did you get it? Did you get 20 percent? Did anyone get 20 percent? <laughs> yeah. Am I getting anything here? No. Copy that. Like now, I bet you rookies coming in this coming year, are gonna have contracts NFTs, yeah. are going to be real different now, too. It's like who owns the digital. But I mean, now the digital rights, like if you looked at how the artists were back in the day, like trying to get their masters for music. Yeah. Now those digital rights are more valuable than ever before. Ever. And they're never going to give it up. Yep. But if you're a rookie coming into any league too, you just want to play. Of How course. do you make more than one though? That's the, we just 
copy on the fucking desktop and then just like just give them different numbers and like oh, these are official well i mean it's just kind of crazy yeesh. well fuck you're asking someone who kind of doesn't really know yeah <laughs> We gotta measure that, right? You make a digital artwork, right? And you wanna multiply it, multiply them, right? There's 20 prints of the same exact thing. Are you just copying and pasting on your desktop and then just changing the names of the fucking titles and going, all right, that's one through 20? It's and so what's to stop artwork. you from doing a thousand and just saying You're those not, those it's those the 20. same shit. I think you just, well, I mean, I think you could put out as many as you want, right? It just devalues it, you know? Bobby Hundreds just did a, a thing with Tops the other day, like another digital thing. There's yeah. no more digital artwork coming out. Like, but why is it's it- just like unbelievable. The I'm just saying how fast it happened. Like this is how fast everyone's on. Their it's going shit. crazy. It's moving extremely fast. It is in two, in two weeks. I mean, you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. And I don't have enough days. money. Yeah, right. yeah. It's crazy. Oh my god. I just you know when we're like we talk we've talked this like in our group chat like multiple times. Like you just feel like you're watching like this boat of money go right by you, <laughs> yeah. and you're just like trying. I like I don't I know it's right there. I just don't know how to make money off of it. That's it. I don't know how to do it. I just texted my boy. I was like, my boy Koa, who's an artist, I'm like, you need to make NFTs now. Yeah. <laughs> now. Now. Seriously. Immediately. Now. No joke. I was going to say this. He was like, why not? Okay. And he's, he's on big celebrity collabs before, yeah, too. Yeah, he's good, too. Bro, what, what, is his art, what does his artwork go for? Uh, Like five couple, figures. A couple grand, right? Like, yeah, like several grand. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah, five ten, figures. Yeah. Five yeah. figures. Yeah. Eight, yeah. eight to 10,000 normal. Up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Drop some NFTs for a fucking couple grand. Yeah. Do a, yeah, depending, it's a no brainer. It's crazy. Especially if you're an artist like that, too. Like, that's... that's like, if you're it. actually good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've seen some of the shit that gets out there? It's, oh, NFT. Oh, half a million. It's like, bro, what is I mean, is art that? is relative, though. Good is, like, you see... We've seen, like, you know, people pay, like... For trash. $100,000. For fucking trash. $100 million for just a splash of paint. You're like, wow. Wow, dude. That wow. looks like uh, ketchup and mustard. Yeah. Blah, it's a blob. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, genius, you know? So, it just doesn't, maybe makes no fucking sense. I think it's just... It came too fast, and everyone's still trying to understand it. So the fact that there's so much money being made on it right now too is unbelievable. Not to mention, it's being paid for in your currency that's moving value too. So it's like the value of what you paid for also can shift every single day in drastic levels. It's a cool way to like raise real capital too, right? From like think of like an emerging artist instead of pushing that music out on SoundCloud or yeah. YouTube, you create little NFTs and instantly sell them for monetize amounts, it. Yeah. Instantly monetize it and raise capital to do. A big you know, project, a little studio, or a project, yeah. or yeah. a new collaboration. It's, yeah. it's. It, what, what, are we, what time are we living in? Damn it's it! It's wild. I think though too. This is one of those things too. Especially if you think that you. I mean, everyone's always really excited to tell someone that they know someone before they did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, oh, you don't know this artist or this book or, or this movie or, or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is or this this artist. You know, you gotta peep this, this person. This song or like you know they oh everybody wants to be the first like like the magic of sharing and I think that's some of why some artists are successful because people are like sharing them as much as they can. So if you see someone that you think is going to be like this is the next whatever and you say oh wow I could buy an NFT of this guy for right now for five thousand bucks like imagine think about this imagine when Juice World first came out. And he put out an NFT and it was 5,000 bucks or something like that to 10,000 bucks. And it was like, oh, who the fuck is Deuce World? And someone's like, oh, trust me, this guy's going to be huge. And then before he died, Deuce World went from nowhere to superstardom and then he died. That $5,000 NFT is now worth easily yeah. a million bucks. You know, limited edition Juice World NFT or something like that. So that I think there is room in there to do it. I think some of these people who are already so huge, I don't know how much bigger they can get or their value it could possibly be. I feel like it's probably in the emerging areas where you buy these NFTs quietly and then it comes to somewhere incredible later. That's where I think it would be dope. But like the brands is where I see it being weird. Like Taco Bell. Yeah. Like Taco Bell launching an NFT and people going nuts over it too. I own the Baja Fresh Cup. <laughs> like, yeah, like <laughs> crazy. Like are you are you going to buy into brands doing NFT launches? I mean, no. no. They're just trying to capture on the craze right now. Yeah. yeah. There's gotta how, do be- we, how do we short this market? <laughs> I mean, there's some, there some more company ones that are coming. Yeah, I think course. somehow, like especially with the cult followings that people like love, like collabs, all collabs imagine, should have NFTs. Yo, I imagine. mean, honestly, we keep talking shit. It's just like the stock market. Like it's not really real. It is it no up and down perception and, and valuations. By the, way, by the way, the stock market makes no sense yeah, right now. Absolutely yeah, zero. Yeah. No, none of it too. Yeah. Like people with like, hey, what's your how about what's your revenue? Negative six hundred million. What's your valuation? Twelve billion. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, That's sick, really tight. Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was a Penn National Gaming little uh, hey. Penn, dude. What did they add today? They, oh, they, it, it was down today. They were down obviously. today. Yeah. Go down they today. blasted up to 140 or 140 whatever. Silly what it was. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on crazy. back down to reality it's a little crazy. bit. You know? Oh, my shit. Um, absolutely unbelievable. All right. 
So let's let's move on from NFTs because we just can't wrap our brain around it. And I get upset talking about it as I know there's dollar signs of someone clicking in the yeah. background. As we're talking about it, someone's actually drawing something and making millions. Somebody just skipped this poll segment on our little yeah. thing. Yeah, Blau. Blau NFT's is hot, man. Yeah. Blau is. Yo, yeah. uh, honestly, before we go anywhere else, too, Blau was 100% ahead of his time when we were talking to him and knew what was going on to and is leading the charge on please, this. Please, please, please go listen to that episode, yeah. people. Because uh, if you look at when he was talking about this in October, what he was saying was exactly how it went and he set himself up to be... The, we are right that's now. why he did it so well in the very beginning because he put it out at the exact perfect time. He sat there and created it all quarantine and just waited in the wind and then just boom. And he, this, he already did his second launch of more NFTs too. And we were looking at him like, huh? So sick. The fuck are you so talking sick. about? So sick. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? Dude. NFT. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, all right. Let's jump overseas real quick. Let's go. Let's travel. We're international, bro. Um, Across the pond. So Meghan Markle and Prince Harry got paid $9 million for their exclusive interview done by Oprah. Yeah. $9 million. Did you watch it? $9 million. <laughs> no. Did you no. watch it? I don't watch anything live anymore. I didn't watch it either. No, I don't no, even know what they live. talked about. But I heard but about it. It was went crazy. Obviously, Oprah's even the meme now, you know? Yeah which is unbelievable. Uh, so they dropped an absolute bomb that the royal family had concerns about how dark their baby skin would be, and that's one of the main reasons why they left. They didn't want to give them security. So overnight, the world turned on the royal family. Netflix obviously has a lot more content for the crown now going forward. Sure, yeah, sure, Shout sure. out to that. Um, what, do you think America gives a shit? What do you mean, do I think? Do you think? Americans are overly infatuated and have been with the royal family forever. Do you think They're even, obsessed. Do you think even more now because we infiltrated? Absolutely. Because Meghan Markle For sure. infiltrated the royal family. That's a fucking Luli. Americans are, and go ape shit over this royal family bullshit, and why? Like, do they forget, like, we went to war with these motherfuckers? And we whooped their ass? We whooped their ass. I think it's the idea that they could, that someone, especially now, because you're like born into being a princess or a prince or a royal family, which is just like this, like every, even like when Christmas comes out too, every single movie is about like this girl, but like falling in love with a prince and in, yeah. in like a random Christmas town. Sure, you sure. Know, in, People in some made up European royalty. village, you know? And Meghan Markle fucking did it. Yeah. Yeah. She, she went from suits to goddamn yeah. it in the royal family. Yeah. From no, from nothing. To, I think that might be the infatuation too. I think just people just like royal, like the idea. People are just of being, yeah, obsessed with like monarchies and, and yeah. kings. Yeah, no, no. But and, even before the Meghan Markle shit, Americans have been infatuated with the royal family forever. Princess Diana, everything. Yeah. yeah. They're iconic for sure. And I think, do you think, but why? So do you think Meghan Markle made it bigger for, for Americans? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, she she made it more realistic for Americans, and now it's like you can never be a part of it before, right? Yeah, that that was the infatuation with it was it was untouchable. All right? planned. You had to be yeah, it was all planned. You had to be born into it. You had to be from a certain kind of class, right? And then you'd be accepted into it. And then she fucking said, "Fuck that, we're in. Let's go." Meghan and now Mark, Americans are like, the, she got that yeah. sloppy, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> I how about being. A no-name actress to getting on a fairly popular show, yeah. Suits, which yeah. I Suits. was a big fan of, then becoming a legit princess, yeah, and, and then, then saying, and then leaving, up. and then literally moving back to the U.S. to like you know shoot content, legend, shoot content, yeah. sign deals and shit, yeah. and give you know, interviews, like what an absolute turn. Do you think British people? Hate her for going in and, and then leaving. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think Americans love it. Yeah, yeah, we love Dude, it they, for sure. Because she gets, now gets the best of both worlds. Her. They yeah. hate her. They hate her, and yeah. they fucking hate him. Yeah, Prince Harry. She, she's yeah. a for, she gets the best of both worlds. She's a forever royal now, no matter what anybody wants to say. Like she's a princess, yeah. even though they're not anymore, but they are. You know, and he's a prince. But now they also get to just be in Hollywood, like chilling, doing James Corden. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like kicking shoot, it with Oprah, shooting, kicking it with Oprah, doing Netflix deals, like crazy. Not just they get the best of both worlds, like being a celebrity and being a royal. Obviously, technically they're not in that world anymore. But yeah. like, what a wild. But the British purists probably look at it like, oh well, the whole shit's fucked up now. Yeah. Right. Because he was like they next in line, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. I feel like if you are second, because he's never going to be king. Yeah. He's just like fuck this, man. I'm out. Yeah, you're right. Because his older his brother dad. is yeah. yeah, Prince William is yeah. going to be king. So he's just like, all right, cool. I'm never. I'm just going to be a prince forever. I'm just going to be like the stand-in dude on the side. We have to go to these these like ceremonies. These every dumb other balls day. Yeah. dressed up like a yeah. fucking asshole. Yeah. He's like, yo, met Meghan Markle. He's like, let's do this. Yeah, let's bounce. Let's, let's go to Hollywood. Yeah, because even if his his brother passed away, it would go to like if his brother was coronated, it would go to the wife, and then the wife would be king queen. She would never get it. No, it would go. It would go to the next person in the family, which would probably be his bro his brother if he died. 
Got which it. which would be an insane situation if it technically did happen. Like oh, that. shit. He's like, yo, Megan, I got to go back and, you know. I got to go be king. Be king. You guys ever seen Scandal? Yeah. Great show. Yeah, crazy. Like, real world shit. Like, what if they just start, like, killing people off and shit? It could happen. <laughs> it could happen for sure. It could happen. Absolutely, it could happen. could happen. I think Americans love the fact that Meghan Markle infiltrated and now she's just. But the wild part, too, is they, what else do they do? They don't govern the fucking nation. They, they're just. They take money from the citizens there. and that's how they're so wealthy and rich. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. Wait, all those, are, all there, those like, reports. King tax? Yeah. Still? Yeah, that's that's how they're they're the, they fund it's, the family. It's funded by taxes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh that's why <laughs> that's why they were so upset because once they left the royal family, yeah. they were still paying for like their security and like because all the things they still need to have is like crazy. Yeah. But now it's not being paid for by the royal family anymore, too. So the cost of that's that they're incurring, now that I feel bad for them at all, too. One interview <laughs> got them nine million dollars. Sure yeah. as fuck isn't being paid yeah. anymore. So from like, the queen. Yeah. So the queen's not I mean the queen. Absolutely hates their guts now. Oh yeah, hates their guts. Taxi, they're using tax to fund a lifestyle. Yeah. It's so yeah, gnarly. that's yeah. the way it's been forever. Forever, that's yeah. So crazy. And yeah. then the parliament actually governs. Yeah, and then they gotta get paid too. Hundred percent. Yeah, they're, <laughs> Fuck. they're just like a staple of of the culture. Two things are guaranteed in life: death and taxes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, the USA still runs shit though. Yeah, we run yeah. shit. Yeah. Facts. We, we don't, just never, we don't we, bow to them anymore. We just never knew. No, no, yeah. no. We just never knew. We run shit now. Donald Trump wanted a monarchy. That's what he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, we run this shit that's now. That's what he was hoping. Um, all right, let's go. Let's come back to the US. Too much, too much UK nonsense. Uh, maybe one of the most entertaining things during quarantine was versus. Yeah. I love the, the versus the battles. battles. Yeah. It was hot. That was crazy. So I don't know if you guys knew the Timbaland and Swizz Beats actually started versus. And then versus was essentially when like artists would go hit for hit and see who essentially was the best yeah. for the viewers. So huge hit, absolutely huge hit, and they had mega artists do it. Bro, the biggest one to date was the Jeezy and Gucci Mane one. Yeah, that shit that was, was crazy. Huge. That was the best one. And it kind of ended the feud or whatever it was. Yeah, I mean, there's still some beef, I yeah, promise. Right. But. but so they officially sold the platform already to Triller. Genius move, I feel like. I think it's a great pickup. We yeah. love Triller. Triller's yeah. hot. Bro. Hey, we're all long on Triller, too. Yeah, we For are. Sure. Now, I, now that they've transitioned out of the fucking TikTok don't bullshit. Don't just be a TikTok no. yeah, yeah. replicate. Yeah. So Timbaland and Swiss Beats, by the way, when they sold, they officially went to bat for all 43 artists that participated in the Versus platform. And um, during quarantine, there's 43 artists that, they, that actually did Versus battles. During, Does it have they, to be an even number? Since they launched it? No, I think they had like some some, some were groups, right, too, where it was like oh, okay. DLC. Oh, okay, you know, okay. I was like, because right. that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, and they all made them, they all got them uh, shares in Triller as part of the deal. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. So they went to bat for them, too. So now Swizz and Timlin obviously have a huge stake in Triller, and well as every single artist who participated, they all got them shares That's as well, sick. too. That's sick. For supporting Growing Versus, which I thought was awesome, by it the way. That's amazing. Like, it's a great move. That's a cool, like, Timberland and Swiss obviously, like, have the relationships to get people on versus and then really paid them back yeah. with, with the sale. Um, is it a cool move for Triller? I think Triller versus being able to collaborate more and have more artists access to it is going to blow it up even bigger. Yeah, I think Triller as an event company, if that's what they're really doing, well, that's what we've said they're doing, but if they continue to do that, amazing pickup. And content in general. Like, we talked about Triller yeah. TV, which is actually doing pretty well, apparently, is that... The this is now just other forms of content that people want to watch. Yeah, they they just it, and, and they're good at it. That's the thing is they're good. Yeah, at they're it. good at it, yeah. and they do it right because it's from their culture. Like yeah, if Versus was made by some by ABC, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it's like hey, we're gonna have Versus Friday night at eight o'clock right after the <laughs> yeah. shitty game show that we just invented. You know, <laughs> yeah, like you know what I mean? Wow, like, like big balls bouncing around, hosted uh, by Ellen DeGeneres, and we're yeah. also gonna have Versus at eight thirty. Like it would have sucked, but it was Timbaland and Swiss Beast just calling their friends and doing it like on streaming live, yeah. and it just turned out to be so culturally relevant. And it was kind of so raw, cool. right? It like was you raw. didn't know what the fuck was about to happen. Culturally yeah. relevant, right? Too, yeah. and that's like that's like kind of what Barcel did too. Like Barcel never has crazy big sets; they're just like throwing shit around. It's always so yeah. disorganized. It just seems so authentic. This is super authentic, and I think Triller has. Could probably grow this into something. Yeah, bigger. no, I'm ready to see some verses in uh, some other genres besides hip hop and R and B. Yeah, the verses we need. You know, Taylor Swift, Selena Gomez. Yes, Britney yeah, Spears yeah, yeah. versus Christina Aguilera. In sync, Backstreet Boys. For sure. Yo, there could be some cool verses. I'm telling you, there, there's some crazy ones that can sync come up. Backstreet Boys would be. Bro, come crazy. on, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Bro, they hit you with that bye bye bye. It's fucking game over. Dog, that'd be insane. Versus white. <laughs> White edition. Yeah, ver Blanco. versus white. White edition. Versus finish. <laughs> white edition. I can't get over it. White edition. Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. That would be so sick. 
They got to get like all the, or you bring back like the uh, one, <laughs> the one Direction guys that go against each other. Oh, now they're, yeah, they're yeah, all solo yeah. and stuff. They're too. all solo and shit. Oh, man. This is great. Or DJs. Like bring like the EDM oh, world yeah, into it too. Ooh. Tiesto. Yeah. David Guetta. Yeah, Boom. Like, yeah, back crazy. to back. So uh, super smart. And Triller has like, they have Marshmallow and a bunch of the DJs on there too. So that are investors. Yeah. Um, I love where Triller's going. And, they, and But that's what you have too. You have all these artists on board. They were obviously trying to do one thing too. And I could see why TikTok, like you're just so infatuated with wanting to be that. You're just like, oh, you have to pivot. And they, they did well. They did fucking great. Crazy. Um, all right. Another big thing. Speaking of Triller, Dana White, they got a big fight coming up. Dana White was on Mike Tyson's podcast yep. talking shit, got real cocky and said he would bet a million dollars that Ben Askren would beat Jake Paul on the fight in April after Mike Tyson was backing up Jake that he's a legit fighter. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Jake Paul obviously got a hold of the footage, went nuts, wanted to double it to $2 million. Winner went $2 million bet each, $4 million bucks. Winner takes all. Even Snoop Dogg is calling him out because he's now in the whole celebrity yeah, boxing yeah, sure. world too on it. Now he's with Triller. Um, calling him out, saying, put your money where your mouth is. Is this, is this enough hype to get this fight to where it needs to be? Ticket wise, I'm gonna say no because there's no one on the undercard. Yeah, but Dana White has to say this. Yeah, Dana yeah, White sure. already he has to back his fighters. Has to back Ben Askren. Yeah, yeah. already. Yeah. And anyway, who the fuck is Ben Askren? But yeah. anyway, uh, Dana White has to do that. You know? A million dollars is a loud bet, though. But again, Dana White has to do that. He has, yeah. to, and he doesn't like. Uh, any of the the Paul brothers? Yeah, yeah. You know? oh, he hates him. Of course, yeah, hates him. Well, Jake Paul was an absolute dick to Dana White. Yeah, of course. But I actually think that this is Jake Paul has nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing. No, no, to no lose. of course. That everything that da- like what Dana did was just dump fuel on Jake's fire. Like he's playing Jake's game. I get Dana could back him up and be like, yeah, Ben, fuck Jake Paul. Ben Askren's gonna win too. But the fact that then he put a million dollars on the line yeah. just fuels the fire even more because if Jake Paul loses, of course, Ben Askren is an actual fighter, unbelievable professional wrestling champion, you know, UFC yeah. fighter. Like, of course, Jake Paul just started fighting like a couple years ago and had a couple bouts against, you know, so of course, so he has nothing to lose. So I feel like this was just amazing for Jake. Jake, he must have been sitting back like, wow, give me more. Yeah, who's putting this fight on? Triller? Triller, Triller. Oh, Jesus. Triller. Yeah, it's another Triller fight. So they're doing yeah. great. I honestly think Jake Paul wins, though. I do, too. I hope he does, because I, I want this to keep going. I mean, Ben Askren's a wrestler, first yeah. and foremost. Yeah. World championship wrestler. Yo, Mike Tyson. He's not a boxer. Mike Tyson goes on out and says, no, 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 Dana. To Dana White, being like, hey, FYI, I'm sure Ben Askren's legit. J- Jake's the real deal. Yeah. Mike Tyson... Has probably has a pretty good eye for boxing. He ain't got to suck anyone's <laughs> dick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Probably yeah, he, has a pretty good eye for boxing. He's not gonna lie or cap about that at all. Yeah, exactly. So you, Mike Tyson, being like, no, 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 he's the real deal. That's, I mean, talk about like a cosign. Talk about the cosign. Yeah, it's crazy. First round, you know? just Jake Paul. By the way, it wasn't him. like Jake Paul was in the room either. Like he could have been like, oh yeah, you know, he might have a good shot too. He was like 100 percent backing up. Like, yo, you are That's underestimating wild. him because of who he was, not who he is. That's the biggest co-sign ever. Mike yeah. Tyson, like, no, 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 he's fucking legit. So that's it. And so recently, too, Floyd Mayweather commented on an interview about the Logan Paul fight that's obviously still potentially happening yeah. and saying that name me a boxer that's, besides Floyd Mayweather himself, too, obviously being at the top, that's more famous than Logan Paul. I'll save you guys some time. Nobody. Yeah, it's Nobody. crazy. But it's Nobody. But Floyd understands that. But And Floyd was totally used to be taken I, I like really the boxing world was taken a storm by how much of a showman he was yeah. and how much remember he like, built that remember, yeah remember the sombrero that he would put yeah. on and and the whole time he was fighting like walked out yeah, with 50 cent fighter. and bieber and he just made it such a spectacle that was so interesting and people used to hate on that the boxing purist and now it's totally shifted where that's now the norm no one gives a shit yeah. about skilled boxers anymore they just want to see people that we know fight each other good or bad right nobody wants to see a skilled boxer or bad boxers box but no one minds seeing a bad celebrity boxer getting yeah. their ass whooped. I want to watch all of that. Yeah, yeah, I'm here sure. for all of it. Sixty dollars pay per view. Yeah, no problem. Sure, sure. I actually think the UFC might have been the best and the worst thing for fight for fighting in general, because before the UFC, boxing was so separated. And when there was a true boxing mat about. It was a big, huge spectacle, right? It was huge names. It didn't happen often. Kind of like when DJs first came to Vegas, right? Sure, yeah. sure. It was only Memorial Day weekend, Labor Day weekend, yeah. New Year's Eve, and then all of a sudden it was seven days a week. And it really wasn't that special anymore. It's marshmallow every day. Yeah, every single day, Monday <laughs> through Friday, it was the biggest DJs in the world, day and night. 
And I was like, okay, cool, you know? And then UFC happened too. And then all of a sudden, there is a UFC fight every single month. There's fights all the time. It just became so consistent where that I feel like the hype in the sport started to slowly die. You can't have those A quality personalities. Like there was a, a meme that came out too. It was like Conor McGregor's fight sold 1.5 million pay per views. And then they have three title fights after that, and it sold like 800,000. Like, con- they, you need Conor McGregor's name. Like, he's yeah. the only personality. You need that personality out there to sell the tickets. For sure. So now we're heading into YouTube versus TikTok or boxing. Everyone wants their piece. Like, yeah. But the money is insane. How much money, Jeff? This, is, I, I, this makes me sick. Crazy. How much money, Jeff? Tell us how much money. Austin, Mc- so there's a TikTok. There literally actually is a YouTuber versus TikTok or boxing event coming up with really big social media stars, headlined by Austin McBroom from the Ace Family. Biggest family YouTubers out there, by far richest shit, um, like ridiculous career. For sure. Versus Bryce Hall, hands down like the new, main, young, TikTok bad boy. Yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah, like the next version of Logan and Jake Paul-ish type of guy, right? Bryce Hall, um, who we're all fans of. I think that he's doing a good job at making himself known, that's for sure. He's getting paid Five million dollars, <laughs> win or lose, <laughs> win or lose, crazy. win or lose, and a million dollar guarantee. bonus if he wins. That's, That's crazy guarantee. fucking insane. I, Talking about like all of these professional fighters that have trained their entire lives, fought in the amateur ranks, fought overseas, yeah. went to Mexico to box for years just to get the pro card and come to the United States and start boxing, and they get paid dick. Yeah, they Nothing. get paid maybe a hundred grand, and that's the top tier guys. Yeah, these are yeah, top tier yeah. guys. Yeah. I think Jake Paul made this like when he was talking about it too. He's, you know, he was like, "Hey, people don't realize people made fun of me for growing my following. People don't realize how important that is. People aren't coming to watch a boxing match; they're coming to watch me yep. box." Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They're not coming to watch a guy fight Nate Robinson. They're coming to watch me box because yeah. of what I built over the past five years. Not in boxing, but in just lifestyle. Yeah. And so that realizing that is totally different now too. You can already tell this is go- this is making someone money. If they're going to be able to pay Bryce Hall one fighter out of this five million bucks, it's fucking crazy, bro. Well, it's insane. Yeah. So you and, also- and that's what it is. You're paying. They're, the reason they're getting the draw is that connection to their actual following, right? These the fighters you you watch them fight like real true fighters. You watch them fight one time or three times a year. Right, but then you don't see the rest of their life. Social media usually wasn't there. These are guys that were kind of on a pedestal, and when they won, they're like, "That's the champ," and that's the only time you got to see them. Yeah. Now these YouTubers, you're connected to every piece of their life. So now when they go fight, you're not. Yeah, they're gonna go fight, and it's a cool boxing match, but you're watching him do what he's doing. But I think that's, if you that's know, a different way to look at if it. you truly know the people in general, like win or lose, like you want to watch, like you don't yeah, mind that, if they that's win, what I'm saying. and you don't mind if they get their ass whooped. Like either way, it's a win-win for sure, no matter what. So you also have Deji, who was already beat by Jake Paul that one time. <laughs> yeah. Faze, that Faze Jarvis, who's in the Faze clan. Taylor Holder, who's like a huge TikToker. Jesus, Danny, dude. Danny Duncan, monster YouTuber. Tanner Fox, monster YouTuber. Harry Jowsey. These are all kids. You know what's yeah. crazy? Is These are all fucking 19, those, 20 kids. All those YouTubers kids. versus yeah. TikTokers, yeah. All, that, all those names you just said, I don't know what any of them look like. Except for the Paul brothers. They're all white. Yeah, but, Actually, I, but except even, for if they're walking awesome down the street, McBroom, yeah, awesome if they're like, walking down, I, I've seen him before too. Yeah, but yeah. Everybody else, if you're walking down the street and they're like, somebody's like, oh, that's a uh, whatever, whatever, I'd be like, uh, who the fuck is that? If yeah. you're in this world though, of social yeah, media, exactly. they're all these are all top tier people that's in, just showing so, my age. in social media, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like if you don't watch YouTube content a lot too, then you wouldn't maybe know a lot of people. But that's why they're going to get a lot of people to subscribe yeah. and, and tune into this shit. I'm sure it's going to be a sloppy ass. Oh, they're just cash grabs. Sure. These these yeah. guys don't give a fuck for five million bucks. No, Hell yeah. Th- th- they try to drop some little social media beef, like with the DM shit, bro. I guarantee behind the scenes, they're just like, hey, man, we just need to sell this fight. We're getting yeah, yeah. fucking paid regardless. Let's yeah. fucking do it. They- five million, I'll fight. Let's go. <coughs> bro, I'll fight anybody for five million. <laughs> Let's go. Let's Win or go. lose? Well, uh, Austin McBroom, too, when they did that um, charity basketball tournament and sold out the Staples Center, like he's yeah, done this wild. before. Oh, this man. was two years ago. That too. was two years yeah. ago. That was pre corona. Yeah. He sold out the Staples Center for a for charity screaming fans. Yeah, bro. It's going insane. screaming. Nuts. Going nuts. And he sold out the Staples Center in less than like three minutes. That's a joke. Ridiculous a for joke. a celebrity basketball game, too. By the way, that Jake Paul was playing in, too, which yeah. was funny, too. Yeah. And because they had their little beef where he's trying to call him out for boxing. Yeah. And like, so this this has been done. Like, they're doing this. Like, when Logan showed out the Staples Center, he's done this before, too. Like, these guys can sell fucking tickets. Like, there's no question about it. Like, that, it's happening. It's wild. So, I mean, unbelievable. We'll see. Is this going to grow even further, do you think? Yep. Yeah. It's not going to stop. I, you know what makes me so upset? It makes me want, like 100% upset, too, is that this we live in Las Vegas, and people aren't forward-thinking enough to see some of these events happen in Las Vegas. Yeah. Like, like they're... Yeah. 
Like 100. Like this is supposed to be the capital of all that shit. Yeah, this is supposed to be the fight capital of the world. Yeah, yeah. now everything happens yeah. in LA. Let's have some stuff. You know, we, not the residencies where people are ending their careers. Let's have some beginning too. You know, let's yeah, start. Let's start. Sure. Let's do the beginning and the end. Uh, all right, we have more topics, but we ran out of time right now too. We'll save them for next week. You did drink a binge it. Let's wrap up let's the go. episode. You know what I'm saying? Um, my Edith baby food. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Uh, recently, before we, like a couple weeks ago, we went to Anthony's Steakhouse for the first time ever at M Resort. Oh, I've wow. I've never been there. Off the Strip Steakhouse. It's pretty good, right? My favorite off the Strip Casino Steakhouse would be Hank's. Where's that at? At Green at Valley. GBR. Got it. Got it. Very good. Uh, Anthony's Steakhouse uh, at M Resort. Actually, really bomb. Really? Really good. What'd you get? Really good. I uh, always had like a plethora of everything too. Melissa had a little steak. Plethora. A plethora. Plethora. God, yeah, like bless. This. Send, wow, send everything out too. Plethora. Yeah. Wow. A little bit of everything. Bomb. Free dinner? Uh no. Oh, okay. A little oh, casino. Nice. A little a little casino comp. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. But no. Oh, there we you just, go. We just I like there, it, man. You know? Yeah. Bomb. What do you got? I have to do it. Um, I said it was opening and it's finally open. Milos. Ooh. So yeah, I love it. Right. Yeah, you have to get the octopus. The octopus is like number one. Well, you gotta tell them though, Milos was stolen. Yeah, obviously we're, we're Milos has come to the Venetian resort, which is incredible from Left the Cosmo. Cosmo. It's the spot for, well, I guess it's you could say Mediterranean cuisine. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's Greek. It's yeah. literally Greek. Greco. Um, but yeah, so the octopus is insane. And the, the, here, here, the cool part about Milos, right, is um, they have like these little mini market like stands inside, right? So you pick the fish that you want, the weight. So good. You know, that's what I want. They grill it for you. Um, you go to the little vegetarian, uh, the vegetable area. I want that fucking uh, eggplant. I want that, that uh, tomato. And they grill that for you. It's a really cool experience. So. Yeah. Um, and the best lunch. Did they still do the lunch they did? Still doing the lunch. Oh, it's the best lunch. How are lunch? It's insane, man. So if you ever go, octopus, got to have the Milo special, which is like zucchini, like light flash fried. Like It's like this little stack with like tzatziki and these like uh, these like f- mozzarella, not mozzarella, but like cheese, fried cheese things. I don't know what the fuck. It's incredible. Pick a fish, get some steak, get the veggie platter, um, the sashimi. Lowe's menu is hard. Yeah, yo, yeah, Lowe, what's going so on, dude? It's sick. If you have three hundred dollars, go to <laughs> go to go to dinner at Milo's. For lunch. Yo, I, no joke though. When we said Milo's lunch. Milo's lunch for the price is hands down the best lunch yeah, on yeah, the strip. For sure. No question. For what you get for the price is literally that Milo's lunch is like thirty bucks or something, yeah, twenty five yeah, bucks, that. and it's like a sixty five seventy dollar dinner. For sure. What would be the price? Yeah. They still do that. Yeah, they do it. Oh my god, so good. I haven't had it yet because we just went for dinner. And it opened yesterday. It looks. Um, uh, I saw yeah. all the Instagram stories. It looks beautiful. It's incredible, bro. Yeah. Okay. All the marbles like flown in from fucking Greece. It's sick. Just in time Ooh. for that 50%. Yeah. Nice. Let's go. All right, what do you got? What are you eating, bro? So mine's going to be all St. Patrick's Day themed. Oh, since okay. this episode will come out on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so we're going to do a little get-together at the house with the family, and we're going to do, usually it's, you know, corned beef You're and cabbage. You're doing St. Patty's Day stuff? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, corned beef yeah. and lettuce or Yo, corned Car- beef and cabbage? Carolyn loves a fucking theme, you know? Yeah, I was about to say, your family loves, Yo, like... Carolyn this. loves a theme. <laughs> yeah, love Anything. It, it yeah. doesn't even fucking matter. We have an, a, an eventful week and weekend. But tomorrow, a little get-together at the house. Uh, we're going to do... Usually, it's corned beef and cabbage. No, we're going to do shepherd's pie, which wow. is also Irish. Bum. Bum. So there's not too many sp- Irish-specific foods. Usually, it's corned beef and cabbage or shepherd's pie. There's not too many So others. filling, but yeah. so bomb. Yeah. So bomb. Uh, so yeah, shepherd's pie. We're going to do that tomorrow. I like that. Uh, my drink it. Have you guys ever had kava tea? Kava? Kava? Kava, like K-A-V-A. It's supposed to help you sleep. Wait, it's- kava, like the one you take, like the all the Polynesians drink, it makes you fucking go crazy? Or like... No, I don't I mean, you can buy it at the grocery store, so I'm pretty sure it's not that. Oh, no, kava no. tea? Kava. K-A-V-A, kava tea. Uh, no. So good. It's like super relaxing, and it literally helps you like calm and go to sleep. I had some a while back, and I forgot really how it was too. I had some recently. Bro, unbelievable. Fire? So good. Like sometimes I need like help relaxing to go to bed at night, like okay. just to like chill out, bro. So good, a taste bomb, coffee, coffee tea. Try it. There you go. Try it. I mean, I, I can't drink it now because now I'm just up all the time. <laughs> but this is pre pre child pre child coffee tea. Uh, so mine is the new Starbucks drink, dude. Oh, let's hear it. Brown sugar. There we go. Ooh. Oat milk. Ooh. Uh, espresso drink. It's brand new for the season. Try it out. This it's, is a low drink or this is on the no, menu? This is on the menu. Oh, it just came called? out. What's so called? brown sugar. It's it's brown sugar oat milk espresso. Oh, that's just the name. Yeah, and, you, and it's like I feel like Starbucks bro- normally has like something cooler than that too, like the yeah. like the, the something latte the, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it, you build it up into a drink. It's actually very delicious. But you got to remember, like 
if it's not coffee, it's espresso. So that shit will run through you if you drink a lot of it. Okay. Oat milk is so hot right now. Which Oat means milk. Run through your ass. Oat milk is so Yo, hot. Yeah, I drank. Right I got a venti. I was like, I'm getting a fucking venti. Halfway through, I'm like, oh my god, it's espresso. Ugh. Hopped on the poop Stomach. map real yeah. quick. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you drink, if you drink cow's milk still, you just you suck. Yeah, you pussy. What yeah, are you, you doing? Suck. Yeah, Come on. Oat yeah, milk, get up. You're the worst. No hemp milk. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. We're trying. No milk. Uh, again. St. Patrick's Day themed. We're doing Harp beer, which is the lighter beer. Yeah. We'll put some green food coloring in it. Of course, we have to have the Guinness. and Car bombs? Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. Come on, man. And uh, Proper 12 Irish whiskey. Okay. Ooh. No Jameson, Proper 12. I nice. like it. Proper 12. Remember the underdog, yeah? That's right. There All you right. go. I like it. You're going to get wasted, huh? Oh, fucking hammered. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, my binge it. This is probably the biggest fuck you in content history really netflix released their new documentary called the last blockbuster oh i know i saw that i saw that oh when did that come out just recently just just came out i just started watching a little bit of it and it just it's just the idea that netflix is putting out a documentary about the the death of blockbuster that they did yeah flex that's a big fucking flex because ever the notorious story is that they offer obviously offered to buy blockbuster and were laughed out of the room and now are putting out yeah. the documentary about actually the physical. It's not about Blockbuster at an entirety, I guess, so far. Yeah. But it's about the last location That's trying sick. to stay alive. But you guys remember, Netflix yeah. wasn't a streaming platform before. It was, it was a mailer. kiosk. Yeah, it was a it was a mailer. It was the mailers. It was the mailers. And then Redbox was oh, the Red kiosk. Oh, Redbox was the kiosk, right? It so was, it was the, the mailers. Though. Netflix was like you you order the movie online, and they'd mail it to and you, and they mailed you the DVD. Yeah, yeah. Do they still have the red boxes? I see them around. Yeah. I see them around. Yeah, yeah. I actually yeah, went for to, a dollar. That was a good deal. Yeah. I went to Walgreens the other day. They sold Redbox in front of it. Yeah, but like, I'm just saying, the idea when I when I clicked play on Netflix. Oh shit! Well, it was just I was like, man, the what? irony. Yeah, the last block, last blockbuster on Netflix. Go watch it. Mine is on Netflix as well. So I, la- last chance, you right? Yeah. But the basketball one. Basketball. Okay, yeah. I saw this. It's it so good. sick, man. So they focus on basketball this time. East LA College is a JUCO in LA. Um, and the players that they brought in are actually amazing. One of them's uh, actually played for my uncle at Westchester's, which is like the top like school for basketball in the whole city or the whole like Southern California. Um, they have a dude that played at Oak Hill, which is where Carmelo went. Um, Oak Hill's great. Yeah. Huge legacy. Those Oak Hill High School jerseys used to sell for a lot of money. Super sick. Yeah, yeah man. Um, so they got those guys, and it was it's, the story is really cool because you see them, and all these guys have like there's issues, right? Like they have temper, they didn't do good, they don't have good grades. There's some issues. Um, so you see them kind of build up each other. The team's doing really well. And it's like I think it was like six or seven parts, but the, it's interesting to see how it ends because this team is fucking really good. They could they're probably like the fifth best team in all of California. Like I'm talking about like Lakers. Those kind of things. and they're probably like one of those top top teams. They're probably better than some of the like the D one schools in California. I don't doubt it. So Damn, that's check dope. it out. Really awesome. Dope. Hot. Last chance you basketball. We're gonna keep is, it. Is this all... an Irish binge it? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> oh, no. My favorite Irish song R- is R- River Dance is a river hot. dance, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Packed auditoriums do with those motherfuckers yeah, just dancing. Crazy. Uh no. But we're gonna keep it Netflix. Have you guys ever seen the show Weeds? Uh, I remember this is like an old like school long show. Long it's an yeah. older yeah. show. It's on Netflix. It was, on, it was on like it. the homepage. Uh, Carolyn was like, I want to watch Weeds, you know, because we like to put like something it. on it. It's like the, the suburban mom that has like weeds. Suburban right? yeah. mom slanging weeds yeah, yeah. all her fucking rich white Oh, is that what the premise was? Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm only one episode deep, but so far I binged that first episode last night. I'm watching episode two tonight. Hey. Hot. Hot. Weeds. I like it. Weeds. There you go. <laughs> but now you can just walk to your neighborhood dispensary and buy yeah, it. Yeah, buy for weed. sure. Yeah. Now it just it doesn't hit like it yeah, used to. It you know, like it used to. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm at this point. I thought it was going to be a super cool Irish binge. It. You know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but Netflix Leprechaun got, in the hood. Yeah, yeah, for no. sure. Something cool. Netflix got the sweep though. Yeah, yeah as always. Um, guys, thank you at the Residency Pod on Instagram. If you need us, as always, big things coming in the works. We'll celebrate the 50th episode with some other cool things down the road. Hit us up soon. Later. Later. Love you guys.